We are honored now to be joined by State Assemblywoman Ileana Pintermarin, Chair of the State Assembly Budget Committee. Good to see you, Assemblywoman. Nice to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me on. Well, we have you on literally days before the state budget has to be struck by the Constitution by July 1st, last day of June has to be signed. This will be seen a little bit after, so we don't know what's going to happen. Let me ask you this. The issue of property tax reform, what is, or relief, what is the most significant aspect of that? And is that the governor's proposal on the so-called anchor property tax relief plan? So, Steve, um, obviously the governor did propose uh, the anchor program, which would be in place of the homestead rebate. Um, as everyone is already aware, that the speaker and the Senate president also have um, come together with the governor to kind of increase that. And it'll be a total of over $2 billion of tax relief. Okay. And does that have to go through the budget committee or is it voted on by the entire, both houses of the legislature? Well, it'll be voted on through a budget bill first, and then it will be voted on for through both houses. Let, let me try this. Um, the debate that's been going on, it, go, it goes beyond this budget. It's a bigger picture fiscal question about New Jersey. So much money has come from the federal government, COVID relief money, um, billions of dollars, if you will. So the debate is, how do we spend this money? But how much of their, how much discussion is taking place, Madam Chairwoman, uh, around, hey, what do we put aside? Because the feds aren't going to keep sending this money. The economy may turn. State revenues in terms of tax income coming in could go down. Where's the rainy day fund? So there's a there's a difference, right? One is the ARP money, which is the America through the American Rescue Plan. Federal um, dollars to the states. Right. So that's separate. Um, what we did obviously find throughout the last uh, two years, and especially through last year, is that we do have a large surplus, right? We um, sales tax was was up. Um, the economy has been doing really really well. Um, you know, in conjunction with state and, and federal, um, I think, reforms, right, that we've been doing and, and putting things into, into play. So there, there, there are separate issues. Number one, I, I think that there will be a consensus. I, I strongly believe in that, that we will put a large amount of, of our surplus money away um, and hold it for next year. I think everyone, not just at the state level, but I think federal wise is concerned about next year's outlook, you know, the inflation, um, rising cost of, of goods, services, um, potential unemployment um, coming down next year. So I think I, I will, I feel at a, a very good place, Steve, that right now the state of New Jersey will be putting a lot of that money um, aside for next year. I know that you know that we've been focused on child care for the last several years. Uh, the issue becomes even more significant in the COVID and post-COVID era. Top, and you understand this better than most given your background. Top priority in terms of, from your perspective, as it relates to accessible, affordable child care. That is actually one of the priorities that you will be seeing in this budget. Um, the figure is not yet agreed upon but child um, care tax credit is definitely something that will be seen in this budget. And we would like to continue it next year as well. Um, I think until certain reforms are done and we've been working on that, uh, are, are seen to come through fruition. Uh, I, I think that right now, this is really a need for middle-class families. You know, you represent uh, a very diverse district, but you're based in the Ironbound of Newark, New Jersey, a very, um, it's, it's an extraordinary community for those who have never visited the Ironbound, do it. It's great, but it's challenged like any urban community. We've been involved in a series dealing with urban matters, urban issues. The Ironbound, while it's a close-knit community and neighborhood, faces what, what are the top two or three specific challenges the community faces? I think that obviously we've seen a huge rise in, in cost of rent right? Because obviously just home sales are through the roof. And we've been seeing that just like the suburbs have been seeing that um, the Ironbound specifically has gone through the roof. So we're, we're dealing with high cost of rent. We are also, um, although we are, uh, we have a large population of undocumented. Um, those are the ones that really have serviced us throughout the, the pandemic and continue to be part of our workforce. So I think that making sure that they have what they need to provide food and, and housing for, for themselves and their family, um, I don't think that that's any different than a lot of other urban settings. But I would say that obviously just infrastructure as a whole, right, um, uh, is, has been uh, 
challenging as well. The Ironbound with floods um, has continued to be a, a, an issue. And, and I, the last thing I would say is just crime, which we've seen that as an uptick throughout all of our urban and now we're starting to see in suburban areas. You know, the baby uh, formula shortage, huge issue. You understand this, not just from a policy and legislative perspective, but, but as a woman, um, as a mom who gets this, here's my question. What exactly can the state do? What should the state be doing versus it's an industry problem, it's a supply chain problem, it's an avid problem that the federal government stopped them at a certain point and they had 40% of the market. It has nothing to do with New Jersey. New Jersey can't do much, you say? Listen, I say that we've done, uh, we've had a lot of policy initiatives when we talk about milk banks um, that we've, you know, we've, we've tried to do this for many years and we've uh, put in regulation. We know that that's not enough, but I think just as a state, we've been able to kind of uh, come and play, have a, a collaboration with pediatricians and, and have uh, really been able thus far to kind of been able to offer a lot of our, our constituents um, ways and being creative of how to obtain formula, which I think is, you know, my kids are now nine and six now, and I can't even imagine some of the challenges that those moms have gone for. Um, kind of makes me sad just as a state, um, but just as an American that, you know, this is not a, a, a our kind of a, an issue. This is more of a, you know, third world country type of an issue. And it, it does make me feel um, angry, upset that um, this is what we're going through. But we are, and then we, we appreciate you talking about it. And I want to also acknowledge that the Assemblywoman was recently acknowledged by ROI the digital platform, the ROI influencer is the power list of 2022. I want to acknowledge that. And also the fact that she's not feeling well at all, but she still chose to be with us. And I assure you, her voice is even stronger when she's 100%. Assemblyman, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. I always appreciate the opportunity. All the best. Stay with us. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Kane University, Prudential Financial, RWJ Barnabas Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, PSENG, The Fidelco Group, PNC, Grow Up Great, The Turrell Fund, Supporting Reimagine Child Care. And by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Hi, I'm Abby. You might see me as an ordinary person, but I've been living with a brain injury since 2018. Opportunity Project gave me hope, and I've gained confidence through job skill training and helping my family. Despite my challenges with memory, I see a possibility to keep improving. If you have a brain injury, you don't have to face your road to recovery alone. Learn more about Opportunity Project and its partnership with Children's Specialized Hospital.